Hey guys, back here with Tua for another video. And today I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about potty training, basically how I do it. Um, some tips and things of uh, what to avoid, what's worked good for me. I've never really had a problem with potty training any of my dogs, and two is no exception. Uh, this is pretty much the only way that I've ever really done it. And like I said, I've, I've always had success with it, and I know it's a big, a big problem for a lot of people. And since my way of doing it has always been good for me, I just want to share my experience with you guys, and hopefully it'll help you in potty training your bull mastiff or whatever other puppy you might have. Uh, with Tua here, we brought him home at eight weeks. He only really had one, what I would consider a real accident. Um, in some other videos, I've covered how he did really good for the first few days that we had him home, but then he, he started having some accidents. But they were just like two or three drops of pee. So it was really weird, and it was always after he had just been out to go pee. He never did poop in the house. He hasn't done that. But, so I would... I thought maybe he had a UTI, and we ended up bringing him to the vet, and turns out he did. Um, once we got him on his antibiotics, within two, three days, he was back to no accidents or anything. And then he did end up slipping up one time, which I'll pretty much take the blame for that. I think that was probably my fault more than anything. I was letting him drink a lot of water pretty late at night, and I didn't let him uh, go out, you know, for, it had to have been two or three hours. So I'll take the blame for that, and we'll say he had one real accident, but beyond that, I, I would say that's pretty good success for, for potty training to only have one accident. So I'll just uh, kind of go through what I do and why I do it. First thing I like to say is I don't recommend the pee pads that people use. If, if they work for you, then, then go ahead. I'm sure they work for some people. But me personally, I don't, I don't like my dogs getting used to the idea of peeing in the house for any reason at all, even if it is a designated area, especially big dogs, because that's a, that's a lot of urine or, or a lot of poop to be in your house for any time. And like I said, if you have success using pee pads, you got a little dog and it's worked great for you, then I would encourage you to keep doing that. No reason to stop if it, if it works great for you. I'm just explaining the way that I do it. Um, but me personally, I just like to keep all of the smell and all of the mess outside and just don't really want to have any of that inside, especially with a big dog like a bull mastiff. Just a lot less headache and things to worry about. And at the end of the day, those pee pads are just another thing to spend money on. And I like to save money when I can, especially, uh, especially with kind of unnecessary products, I guess. I, maybe they're necessary to some people, so I'm, I'm not trying to downplay the pee pads or talk bad about them. I just personally never have used them and don't really like them. Uh, the main thing that I use to potty train my dog is the crate or the kennel. And that's worked great for me in my whole life with all the dogs that I've had. It, uh, to me, it's the, the simplest thing. It's, it's definitely, um, definitely is going to take up some of your time, I guess, but you got a, you got a bull mastiff puppy now. It's, your time is his time now, kind of. You're just going to have to deal with that. But what I do, the first thing that I would say is the most important is when that puppy is not in his crate and he's playing, what you should do is about probably the first few days you have him home. If you, if you don't have him in that crate, probably about every half an hour, you're going to want to take him out to go potty and take him to the same spot in your yard or, or wherever you take him especially right away, and uh, tell him go potty and encourage him to go, and stay out there for five or ten minutes, and if he doesn't go, then go ahead and come back in. But the key to this is, if he didn't go, put him back in his crate, or his kennel, and have him stay there for about 15 minutes, and then try again. If he doesn't go again, then same thing, back to the crate and do that again for about 15 minutes. Eventually, after some of those 15 minute increments, he's gonna go. So then when he does go, heavy praise, give him a treat if you want, and uh, you can go back to having him out. 
So after the first few days, I would, I would say you can probably increase that from a half hour to about an hour where you'd be letting him out if he's not in his crate every, every hour instead of every half hour, depending on how much you trust him. But I would say after a few days, that's what I generally do. And that's what I did with him. And then same process over and over again. Um, so then every hour, let him out if he doesn't go in his crate and then every 15 minutes, get him out. And it's going to start to click in their head pretty quick. I've, I've never really had an issue with potty training, and I know lots and lots of people do. And maybe you don't do it the way that I do it. And it's kind of a painstaking way to do it, but it really works. Uh, another thing, too, is the first week that I bring them home, I only give them water at mealtimes. And I know it sounds like that's not a lot of water to give them. But at the end of the day, when... They're an eight-week-old puppy. They're not really playing too hard anyway that they're working up a huge thirst or anything. They pretty much just eat and sleep and walk around a little bit. They don't... It's not like they're out in the yard running around and panting and really need the water or, or anything. So that first week, I definitely just give them water at mealtimes and maybe extend that into a couple weeks. I think with him, we extended that into a couple weeks just to be safe. And like I said, at, at the time, he was having those UTI issues, so I didn't want him to have more accidents so um, and then another thing to kind of go along with the whole water thing is for probably the first three weeks to a month I wouldn't give him any water after seven o'clock at night because I wanted him to be able to kind of hold his bladder through the night and he actually did a really good job with that pretty much from the first couple nights that we brought him home he would he wouldn't really have to get up and go and I think a big part of that was because I would make him wait or not, not allow him to drink water after 7 o'clock. So he didn't really have anything in his bladder. You know, when we would go to bed at 9.30, 10 o'clock, maybe 10.30, he'd go out again for his uh, last call, I guess you could say. And that would be it. He wouldn't ha really have to go again until, you know, maybe between 5 and 6 in the morning or a little later at times. And uh, here, let's change you. Why are you just laying on your back? You're just being goofy now. Uh, so yeah, no water after seven and just do that until you're comfortable with your dog and where you, where you think he's at. It's going to be a big feel thing from your side too, because not every dog's going to be the same. You're going to, you're going to get a vibe from your dog on if they're, if they're ready and you can start increasing that water. And when he did have his accident, um, I was definitely giving him water after seven because he'd been doing some hard playing. And like I said, and I wasn't paying attention, I guess, and it had been two or three hours before, uh, from the last time that he had gone out. So I guess to conclude, I, I know it sounds like a lot of work and, and at the end of the day it is cause it, you're going to have to invest a lot of time if you want to get this dog potty trained and you want to do it quickly. And puppies are a lot of work. I, I mean, I always say, you hear the old thing about don't get a puppy at Christmas because it's going to turn into a big dog and then you're not going to want the big dog. I, I guess I've always kind of been the opposite. I'd rather have the big dog and not the puppy because there's so much work. But it is nice to have a puppy and let them start with you as a puppy because you get a lot of good bonding and then you can kind of mold that dog into what you want him to become for the most part. They're going to have their own personalities, but you can give them a good head start on, on what they're going to become. So I guess to uh, go over everything quickly again here, get a crate. Uh, first week you have them home, let them out every half hour that they're not in the crate. If they don't go potty, back into the crate for 15 minutes and then do that in increments. After about the first week, you can start doing that every hour, let them out. And if they don't go into the crate until they do go and let them out in 15 minute increments. And eventually, it, it, they catch on pretty quick, guys. They're 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 smart. They're they're gonna catch on. And uh, if you have any issues with potty training, go ahead and and ask me. But I would say that's a pretty good breakdown of exactly how I do it. And I've had great success with every dog I've ever owned. But it does take work. So with that, I think I'm gonna go ahead and conclude the video. And I hope you guys have a good rest of your day. Take care.